So a very good morning to everyone. So let's start today's uh, uh, lecture. But before starting the lecture, let's wait for one or two minutes so others can join it. Okay, uh, so before starting it, let me know whether I am audible and visible to you or not through this poll. Okay, great. Then. So let's start with our today's topic. So today we are going to discuss about of biological evolution. Today we are going to start with the theories of biological evolution and we are also moving towards the human evolution. We are also going to study the different eras and how in those eras humans get evolved or organism has formed. Okay, so before starting our today's topic, let's have a look to this question. Your question is, Darwin's finches are a good example of. Your question says, the Darwin finches are a good example of what? Option A, industrial melanism. B, connecting link. C, adaptive radiation. Or D, convergent evolution. Students, you can give your answer through the poll and those who are able to give the answer through poll can give their answer in a chat box. So the Darwin finches are a good example of, in a previous class, we have studied so many evidence of the evolution, right? So in that one topic was the adaptive, radiation okay so we can say this adaptive radiation is a good example given by the darwin finches we have seen that the darwin went on a voyage of five years and where he found a group of island that was galapagos island on which each and every island he found the same kind of bird right that was finches and those birds those birds having the same body structure apart from their beak right depending on their food habit so the darwin finches are the good example of adaptive radiation so today we are going to as i said we are going to study or discuss the theory of the biological evolution. In this, we have three different theories. We are going to discuss the Lamarckian theory, the Darwinism, and the last theory that was given by the Hugo D. Varese. Okay, so when we are going to talk about the Lamarck, okay, so our first theory is Lamarckism, which was given by the Lemma. The full name of Lamarck is Jean Baptiste D. Lamarck. Okay, the full name of our scientist or biologist is Jean Baptiste D. Lamarck. And this person has published his work in a journal named 
philosophy zoo logic okay he published his all the work his uh, theory in a journal that is philosophy zoology and in his theory he or talked about the inherited characters right and those inherited characters in his theory he explained the three postulate the first postulate of his theory said that inheritance of acquired character that means we acquire a character from our parents right so whatever we have we are inheriting it from our parents or we can acquire them according to our adaptation occur next he says in his theory the use or disuse of organs also leads to the evolution right if we are uh, keep a particular organ in a use then the portic that organ will stay in our body but if we keep on disusing that organ for a long period of time that that organ become starting disappear in our later generation or in future generation and the third postulate which he gave was the internal vital force can lead to <clears throat> new variation that means we are so powerful that if we have a strong will if we have a strong will of having some extra organ like if i keep on thinking that uh, i wish i have two more hands or i have five more heads then that strong will that internal vital force will definitely leads to the production of those extra organs okay this is all said by the hugo de veris okay so when we are talking about the acquired characters they depend on our use and disuse if we go for the use example see giraffe initially the giraffes had a very short neck but due to the high height or the tall uh, trees they are unable to reach to the top layer of the leaves so he, they have to keep on uh, uh, stretching their neck so that they can grab those teeth uh, leaves sorry so in a mean duration so with the passing time due to this continuous stretching of their neck they have evolved to a very long neck now they become able to grasp or take the leaves which are present on top side or the edges of your tree so this is an evolution which is led by the use of a particular organism right then we have the evolution by disuse initially the reptiles okay initially the reptiles for example snakes found to have the limbs as you can see in this picture the snake has limbs due to which he is or it is able to crawl on a ground but as they are keep on crawling on a ground so there is no further use of limb because their body can do the swirling movement and they can easily crawl right so their limbs get disappeared with the passing time okay so according to lemma our use and disuse of an organ decide whether this organ will exist in a future generation or in a future uh, individuals or it will get disappeared for example we have vestigial organs right we have discussed in a previous class we have nictitating membrane we have uh, the vermiform appendix we have the wisdom tooth right they are still present in our body but we do not have any use of them so they are getting smaller or disappearing day by day now the next theory of our biological evolution is darwinism theory that was given by the darwin and this darwin theory it depend on its voyage as i have told you he he went for the five year voyage through a ship that is hms beagle 
the name of the ship was her majesty ship right so that five year voyage he took towards the 1000 km in a west direction okay he took a five year voyage that uh, around 1000 km in a west direction from 1831 to 1836 okay when he moved uh, when he moved 1000 km in west he found there was a group of island there was a group of islands so those group of islands were known as the galapagos island galapagos island now this galapagos island has several islands out of which 14 were major that is 14 islands were very large and the eight were minor so he visited all those major and minor islands while visiting those island he found there was a bird a similar bird found on each and every island that bird he gave a name finch okay the name given to that bird was finch so we are calling that finch a darwin finch he observed that if that island emerged from a single piece of land now each and every island has a different variety of food some have seeds some have insects some have nuts some have fruits so depending on their a uh, food habit what your finch is eating the finches have the different type the finches have the different types of beak okay so the finch was the same but only difference occurred in their the beak shape okay and during this his adaptive radiation for me a uh, theory he also explained the natural selection okay he also explained the natural selection how the natural selection take place see we have the unlimited source of food okay initially we have unlimited food source so due to the presence of unlimited force a uh, source what happens what happens ultimately the population will increase if we have a good amount of food we don't have to work uh, much so we can increase our number so due to that unlimited food the population increased okay the population increased okay and this increased population in a some period of time become over populated area okay it be really uh, results into the over populated area now the population is larger as compared to the food source okay now we have more individuals as compared to the food resource so what happened next what happened can anyone tell me what happened when we have a limited food but the number of individuals are more right there we lead to the struggle there we generate a competition right it leads to the competition who will come first will get served first okay so first come first serve wali condition generate ho gayi now this first come first serve condition leads to the competition and this competition generated a struggle for existence okay this first come first serve competition leads to the struggle for existence right now out of this whole population out of this whole population some of the people or we can say individual have the tendency to survive in a limited food supply they can survive with a small amount of food so we can say we have a variation here we have a variation here okay 
we have individuals those require a good amount of food for their survival and we have some those individuals who can survive in a limited food supply so as the food depletion take place only those organism will survive which have a tendency to maintain their body function under the short supply of food okay so they according to this we have two types of variation one is positive one is negative positive for those who can survive in a small amount of food supply and the one negative one is for those who can not stay with a limited amount of food okay so the positive variation always lead to the success whereas the negative variation will lead to the failure so who become fail according to the changing environment according to the supply of food source they will die okay they will die they are not longer going to exist in our environment because they are not able to survive or tolerate that changing condition of the environment but those who have the positive variation are said to be the naturally selected people they are naturally selected species okay so for that natural selection because here nature has selected these organism or species we also use a term that is survival of the fittest we also use the term that is survival of the fittest this survival of the fittest term was coined by was given by the <clears throat> herbert boer okay this or sorry the herbert spencer sorry the term survival of the fittest was coined by the herbert spencer but it was used by the darwin okay it was used by the darwin so is it clear to everyone that the availability or the changing environment always make its selection okay so we can say this natural selection is based on heritable minor variation so here we have seen the species or we can say we have the species who are able to survive with a small amount of food so they get this variation with a small stomach uh, stummy size so they have a minor variation over production limited natural resource struggle for existence and then the survival of fittest so this is our actual flow of leading to the natural selection so whenever we look for the natural selection the variation always appears first after that natural selection takes place ऐसा तो नहीं हुआ ना कि पहले फूड रिसोर्सेस खत्म हुए देन आपका इंडिविजुअल में वेरिएशन आया नो इनिशियली द इंडिविजुअल हैव द टेंडेंसी टू सरवाइव विद अ लो फूड कंडीशन बाय द कंज्यूमिंग लो अमाउंट ऑफ फूड और अ वेरी स्मॉल अमाउंट ऑफ फूड सो वेरिएशन एग्जिस्ट इज ऑलवेज फर्स्ट ओनली देन द नेचुरल सिलेक्शन takes place okay so always keep this thing in mind the variation comes first only then natural selection takes place okay so this natural selection has the different effect for example we uh, you have already studied about the inheritance okay the inheritance of character for where in genetics we have used the three different types of genotype the capital t capital t capital t small t and small t small t if we go for the capital capital t that was representing the tall ones okay now we are saying we have the capital t and small t the heterozygous ones they were also having the tall character but the small t small t that is homozygous recessive ones having the short character okay so this heterozygous condition takes place due to the variation because here the dominant and recessive alleles or the genes got mixed up 
right so you can see in our first graph the actual peak was represented by this dotted line but due to the existence of this recombinant variety our peak has taken a sharp rise okay so this is showing the mixing or we can say here all the tall type of organism or species were there then in next graph you can see there is a shift there is a shift in the curve initially it was present in the middle but now it gets shifted towards right so the shifting or the directional selection leads to either it is shifting towards the dominant one or it are either it is shifting towards the dwarf ones right so when we have the directional selection it is always going to choose one out of the two characters okay then we have the disruptive selection again instead of having a one peak we have the two peaks that means during this selection we are going for the complete dominant ones and we are having the complete recessive ones there is no existence of these intermediates okay so in disruptive selection we have either the tall uh, we have both the tall ones that is dominant ones and the recessive one population in directional we are shifted towards a one type of species but in stabilizing of selection we have the mix of all the types now darwin uh, darwin has explained his natural selection through uh, many different example the next example and the very uh, famous example of darwin is industrial melanism okay the industrial melanism which is belonging to the color of the moth okay so here we are using the experimental model or explaining model a moth whose uh, scientific name is bistin betularia okay the name is bistin betularia okay so we are comparing the two environmental conditions okay as we are discussing the natural selection so we are taking the two different natures condition in a first condition let me change the color we have no pollution okay initially we do not have pollution so when we do not have any kind of pollution at that time the trees this is a tree we can find the growth of lichen the growth of lichen on the trees and these lichens are lighter in color they can be white or slightly grayish in color okay so what happened the moth this bistin betularia uh, also exist in two different colors one is white and the another species is dark okay so when the white color moth when the white color moth sits on the lichen they completely get camouflaged okay when the white color moth sits on the lichen they get completely camouflaged okay so due to this camouflage they uh, uh, the birds are unable to find them due to which birds are not going to eat them but on the very same time when on that lichen the dark moth sits now the background is light and the moth present there is darker of shade so jab bhi uh, we have the dark thing over a light background it get highlighted right or we can say we have a dark background and i am using the light shade so it is getting highlighted in the very same way or in a very uh, reciprocal manner we have the light background and now we have the darker shade of moth so they become visible from a very long distance to the birds so the birds started eating them birds started 
eating them due to which at that time we have the high population or the large number of population of white moth as compared to the black ones or the darker ones right now as the industrialization increased as the industrialization increased so we have the popular pollution okay the pollution also increased now this due to this increasing population we also know the lichens are the good pollution indicator jaise hi pollution aayega lichen bhagna shuru ho okay they started disappearing so now what happened we have a tree but there is no lichen so here only we have the dark bark of the tree okay now our background become light to dark again we have the two types of moth the lighter one and the dark one now in if on that dark bark when the white color moth sit they get highlighted so now bird started eating them okay but now the dark color moth get advantage because the bark is also dark in color and their body color is also dark so now the dark bark uh, the dark moths getting camouflaged with their environment okay so after the industrialization or during the industrialization we got a natural selection okay in without industrialization our nature was in favor of the white moth but as the industrialization increased pollution increased the environment become favorable for the dark moth so the pollution population size of the moth reversed now we have the dark color moth as compared to the light colored moth okay apart from that we have the pest resistance crop we have the antibiotic resistance bacteria or we can the super bugs right so all these are example of natural selection for example if you got sick doctor provide you a particular prescription to take the dose of a medicine or some antibiotic for 5 days but in a 2 days you were getting relief so you stop eating those or you are not going to complete your prescription of particular medicine and that time you are actually not killing that bacteria you are just making them weak but whenever you give that bacteria a small dose of antibiotic every time now they become habitual to that antibiotic and become resistant and complete resistant to that particular drug okay so whenever we get uh, the same uh, infection again and again we always go for a long dose a uh, duration or long course of antibiotic okay so this is how we are leading to the making of antibiotic resistant or the natural selection now now we have the last theory of biological evolution is given by the hugo de varis okay this hugo de varis uh, <clears throat> uh theory is depending on the mutation the hugo de varis theory is based on mutation hugo de varis uh, says that the evolution evolution which is taking place always a result of small mutation or the changes which get accumulated with the period of so he conducted his experiment on the evening primrose and that evening primrose has the scientific name oinothera lamarckiana okay the scientific name of evening primrose the experimental model used by the hugo de vary is oinothera lamarckiana and he believed that the evolution in these evening primrose also takes place due to the small small mutation or the accumulation of small changes by the uh, moving time okay so if we go for this this small change which is leading to a large 
change a small step large mutation which was explained by the hugo de varis is known as saltation is known as saltation so each and every small step is always leading to a great evolution a great change and this is known as saltation okay so your question for today is a single step large mutation leading to speciation formation of an evolved species or a different uh, origin of a new species is called you can give your answer through this poll what is the single step large mutation leading to speciation called if you are unable to give your answer in the poll you can give it in a please give your answer fast only 20% of you have given answer the rest give your answer fast okay the 10 seconds left okay so as you can see only 66% of the participants has given their answer and in this answer some of them have given option b and some of them given answer d c here we are talking about the changes right and we know a small step here is a small change or we can say let's take an example of sickle cell anemia right you have studied it you know it very well there is only a change in a single base okay there we got a change in uh, on a single nitrogenous base which leads to the formation of a complete different polypeptide chain because that single base leads to the inclusion of some different amino acid right and that single step that is a small change has make a large mutation there the cell of the rbc from spherical to become the sequel right so that single step large mutation always form a different species always leads to the formation of new morphology right so here we are not selecting anything we are just making or developing a new species so this step where we are just generating a new species is known as saltation but along with this variation when the environmental condition also changes when the environmental condition also changes that leads to the natural selection so in this question we are just only talking about the variation not about the selection because there is no environmental change right now as you know if a person is having the sickle cells sickle shape red blood cells they are never going to get the malarial infection because the plasmodium parasite <clears throat> sorry pathogen can never exist in a sickle cell so like uh, for example in a future we got a condition when the malaria become a pandemic okay when a malaria become a pandemic like our covid only those people will survive who have the sickle cells right only that time we say it was a natural selection but before that we have only saltation is it clear to everyone now is it clear okay so now moving towards the hardy weinberg principle hardy weinberg is always talking about the large population the stability of a large 
population and he says the stability or equilibrium in a large population only exists when there is no mutation on when there is no variation come okay so he says that the allele frequency in a population are stable and is constant from generation to generation in the absence of disturbing factors here he is talking about some disturbing factors can you tell me what disturbing factor he is talking about you can give your answer in chat box about which disturbing factor he is talking about which are going to uh, disturb or hinder the consistency of a particular allele in our generation so those factors are these five factors the gene migration that means if an individual move from one geographical region to another right for example we can say we have different breeds of dog right we have pug we have labrador we have golden retriever but all those are the same they are dogs but if we mix the two species if we made the two different breeds of the dog the resulting offspring will be an hybrid right so they will be carrying the few characters of both the parents like you right you have the characters coming from some from your father some from your mother you are not just a copy of your fa either father or a mother because you have a mixing of genes from the father and mother both right so that is genetic recombination so genetic recombination also leads to the variation because here mixing of gene take place and this take place during meiosis process okay that only happens in a during the sexual reproduction then we have the genetic drift the genetic drift says if a small change appears suddenly in a small population okay if there is a small change appears suddenly in a small population then it leads to the genetic drift okay then we have the mutation as we have uh, uh, already taken the example of that a uh, sickle cell anemia and then the natural selection okay when the environmental uh, condition changes they always look for the for survivals okay they always look for the fittest species okay so these five factors are the ones who can disturb which can disturb the hugo de verrys equation and his equation says the p square plus q square p square plus q square plus 2 pq is always equals to 1 here the p square is the genetic frequency or the genomic frequency of the homozygous dominance right then q square is representing the genetic frequency of the homozygous recessive whereas the 2 pq is representing the genetic frequency of the heterozygous individuals okay but if we are going to talk about only the p and the q as this equation is of a plus b ka whole square so a plus b ka whole square that is p plus q ka whole square is equals to 1 ka square so we can say p plus q is equals to 1 okay we leads to the conclusion that p plus q is also equals to 1 that is the allelic frequency the individual p and individual q represents the allelic frequency of a particular character okay so here you can see the example here we have total number of alleles that is capital a and small a is equals to 4 so if you go and count these ladybugs 
the red ladybugs and the yellow ladybugs you can find there are 26 capital a present and 14 small a were there okay so the allylic frequency for each and every character for the p it become 26 out of 40 because there are 20 pairs so we have 40 genes so 26 out of 40 that is 0.65 then if we go for the recessive one that is q there is 14 upon 40 that is 0.35 and if we combine the both if we do the sum of 0.65 and 0.35 we get the total allylic frequency one that means it is representing our eugodiberis principle now moving towards the genotype as you can see 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 10 are homozygous dominant so genotype for homozygous dominant is 10 number of homozygous dominant is 10 then 1 2 3 4 5 6 6 are heterozygous here we are going to talk about the genotype now so 6 are heterozygous and the rest four are homozygous recessive now we have to find the frequency of this okay so the frequency of homozygous dominant is 0.5 that is 10 upon 20 because we have the total 20 individuals out of which 10 are having the homozygous dominant genotype then the six individuals have the heterozygous condition out of 20 so their genetic frequency or genomic frequency become 0.3 and for the homozygous recessive we have 0.2 now the p square is 0.5 2 pq is 0.3 and q square is 0.2 now if we are going to sum all these three we are again going to get the one okay so change of frequency of allele in a population disturbs the hugo de veris principle but here is no change so we are done with this so next uh, let's go for the explanation of each and every uh, factor the gene migration okay for the gene migration let's say we have a two species of birds on the either side of hill and suddenly one of the individual from this uh, species a move to the right side and from the species b an individual move towards the left side okay but now what happened as we are taking only one example so let's say the species a individual has moved towards the right side and get mixed with the species b so it will lead it will lead to the formation of the offspring by mating those individuals and there we will find a new species okay then there is a genetic drift genetic drift says see here are three varieties of frog three species of frog are present the land becomes small so one of the species that is the red one has started thinking that this land is not according to us let's move to some another side okay so they went to some another geographical region but when they went to some other geographical region the condition were not in their favor okay the condition was not in their favor so that species get completely extinct they were not they will not survive there and they completely get extinct so this lead to the genetic drift only a particular type of genes will move further or you can see here here we have the two types of beetles the green and the a uh, skin colored ones the skin colored ones get chemoflaves with the environment so the human are unable to see those so they are only going to kill those who are visible to us just like the moth which we have discussed in a natural selection okay then <clears throat> we have the mutation a small mutation a small change can lead to the varieties so here you can see or here we can take the example of our skin color a small variation 
a small change or recombination in our genes lead to the formation of different types of skin color. For this, we have a several uh, factors responsible leading to the mutation. Then we have the genetic recombination. As I have said, it is taking place during the sexual reproduction while the gamete formation, right? So this genetic recombination takes place at the time of meiosis of genetic or gene formation where the crossing over between the homologous chromosomes takes place. And this crossing over leads to the exchange of genes. Then these are the stabilizing uh, selection. So if, uh, if the population is not getting changed or it is not get, having any variation, then there is no change in the peaks or there is no shifting in the peak of our population, okay, or the individual's phenotype. Now let's move towards our last topic of the day and the last topic of this book that is the account of evolution. As you know, uh, we have uh, the earth originated 4.5 billion year ago, right? So from that time to this time, several years ha uh, eras have passed by. So to discuss that, your first question here is, the given bones in the forelimb of the three mammals figure shows what? The here we have three pictures of mammals limb. According to you, these three pictures are showing what? Your option A says, developed from a common environment. They are developed from a similar earlier species. They have a genetic makeup or they are, they have an identical matter, method of obtaining food. So according to you, what you will say? Okay, only 16% uh, have given their answer. The rest, please give your answer. Okay. Okay. So as you can see, only 33% uh, of you have given answer and you have opted for the option A and C. Okay. Now let's discuss this. Okay. As we go forward, we have studied about the homologous organs, right? We have studied when the structure remain the same, but function differs, but function differs. It shows the, it shows what? It shows that we are arising from the same ancestor, right? That is why our body makeup or the structure of body is same but as the time passes as the condition change as we move towards the different geographical region or we have started having the different uses of those structure we are performing different function so the option a which shows developed in a common environment it can be true it is saying we are developed from the same earlier species. That's it, right? That is right because it is says we are. Uh, it says we have the common ancestor. Then it says we have a similar genetic make makeup. If we have the similar genetic makeup, then all the three will look alike, right? But it is not there. Then D says they have a common method of obtaining food. How these lim uh, limbs shows the common method of obtaining food? No. So here we can only opt for the option B. That the similar structure and different function always shows the homologous organs. And homologous organs always give us the evidence of same ancestor. Yada have you remembered now? So now this next question says, let me generate the poll first. Okay. So this question says, the diversity within the wild bird species in the given diagram, given blue, explain the which process. Here you can see, we have the common ancestor here, 
from this common ancestor we from the common ancestor we are having the different types of birds right so only 33 person have given their answer please give your answer first you have to participate in it if you are not going to participate you are not going to understand in which topic you are lagging behind in which topic you are having a less understanding okay only the 66 person people have given their answer okay so as you can see 75% of you has opted for the option d and only 25% has opted for the option c so let's see what our option says the option a says the natural selection option a says natural selection okay option b says ecological succession option c says adaptive radiation and option d says both natural selection and adaptive radiation see here we can remember the example of darwin finches okay these are the example of darwin finches right they all have the common ancestor but as they move towards the different geographical region according to their environment according to their availability of food they have got adapted okay they have adapted the changes there for their survival so this is a great example of only adaptive radiation here is no variation okay we have the variation but that variation occurred when when we have adapted to something so lemark has used this term if we use or disuse some organ and the variation which we are producing is always depend on the use and disuse of the particular organ so this is the example of only adaptive radiation now we are moving towards the different eras of our evolution so as you know we have the four eras here the four eras here are the proterozoic uh, era the paleozoic era the mesozoic era and the cenozoic era okay we have the four eras to uh, learn the sequence of these era we have a mnemonics you can write the mnemonics i am uh, telling you press the pale button to message the center press the pale button to message the center okay so here press the p of press representing the proterozoic era the pale of the uh, pale the pal of the pale is representing the paleozoic era and then we have the mess of the message which is representing mesozoic era and we have the sen from the center that is representing the cenozoic era so till the origin of earth and here we have only four types of era in this four type of era we can say this proterozoic era is the early life era it is the early life era then we have the paleozoic era or we can say it is the ancient life of the living organism then mesozoic era represent the era of reptiles and gymnosperms where as the cenozoic era it is the era of mammals and angiosperm so we can say we are currently staying in this cenozoic era the paleozoic era existed from 2500 to 51 million year ago and in this era the first cellular form appeared okay so this era is the remarkable or the benchmark for or uh, knowing that the first cellular form as we have uh, discussed the prebiotic soup right the hot spring soup where the first life appear in a water then this petrozoic era again have the six different period the cambrian 
ordovician silurian devonian carboniferous and permian era these different eras are responsible for different origin of different uh, ages so oridian era is the age of invertebrate the devonian era uh, period it was the age of fishes and here ferns also appeared there was an abundance of fern then we have the carni uh, carboniferous era here we have the amphibians and the first seed plant that is the gymnosperm then in a permian era it is known as or it is remarked for the origin of conifers okay so here we have the six periods in a petrozoic or this era so next we have the paleozoic era which existed from 540 to 252 million year ago as i said this is the era of invertebrate or our ancient life so 500 million year ago the invertebrates appear uh, 450 million year ago the first land organism appeared that is the plant Okay, four hundred years ago, arthropods appear, and three fifty years ago, million year ago, the jawless fishes were evolved. So, in this Paleozoic era, we can see the origin of several types of organism. And in eighteen thirty eight, we have discovered a fish that is Coelacanth fish, which was caught from the South Africa. and it was the extinct species that means we can say it was the only one uh, fish which is existing as the ancestor okay then we have the third uh, era that is mesozoic era it ranges from 252 to 66 million year ago in this era the land reptiles went back into the water and leads to the formation of fish like reptiles or we can say from this onwards we have the evolution of fishes from the reptiles okay and this is also the era of dinosaurs then the last is our cenozoic era which is existed from 66 million year ago we started 66 million year ago and leading till present so we are staying in this cenozoic era which is the era of mammals and the angiosperms okay now we have the different varieties of plant or we have also the evolution of this plants so evolution of plant is taken from these four categories and for this we have the mnemonic that is fight fight nia fight to remember this sequence the chlorophyte for the first fight tracheophyte for the second fight nia that is rhinia and the fourth third fight is coelophytes okay so the mnemonic for learning this is fight fight nia fight okay then as you can see from the chlorophyte we have uh, giving rise to the bryophyte the tracheophyte and sister giving rise to the three different types of plants that is gesterophylla arbuto uh, arborescent lycopods and the herbaceous lycopods then this tracheophytes again evolved to the rhinia type and this rhinia further evolved to the zelophytans and this zelophytans have give rise to the origin of different types of plants or the evolution of plant from where the hostels ponds jinkos conifers knee tails cycads all of them arise okay then this uh tubular form or this tree uh, distribution shows the evolution of different types or different categories or different classes of animals from a common ancestor so we can say the early common uh, ancestor of these all the species existing 350 million year ago okay 
so your question is correct uh, select the correct order of geographical time scale of the earth here we have to find out the different eras right here we have to find out the different eras in a correct sequence we have already discussed our era so according to you which is the correct order option a the paleozoic archaeozoic and cenozoic b archaeozoic paleozoic proterozoic c paleozoic mesozoic centrozoic and d the mesozoic archaeozoic and proterozoic only 60% of you have given the answer the rest please give your answer fast only 5 seconds left okay so as you can see the 67% of you have given or chosen the answer option c and only 33% have chosen the option d okay so as we have discussed there are four eras the proterozoic paleozoic mesozoic and cenozoic for which we have mnemonic to press the pale button to message the center so according to that the proterozoic is the first one from after that we have paleozoic mesozoic and cenozoic so if we go to this question and look for we have only the option c in a correct order okay so those who have opted c you have given a correct answer okay so today we are going to do only this much in the next class we are going to discuss the evolution of man and along with that we are also going to start a new chapter is it clear to everyone okay so before uh, leaving uh, before leaving the class please give your feedback through this mps uh, poll sorry uh, uh, we don't have any mps poll okay so if you have any of the doubt you can write down your doubts or any confusion in a chat box in the next class we are definitely going to resolve this okay so till now this is all for today have a great day and we'll meet next week with a new class and topic okay okay and all of you can leave the class now Uh, definitely i'll share you the notes of the complete evolution